Hi everybody, Mr. Wyatt here, and today we are looking at section four of topic six. We're working with percents, but today we're going to be estimating percents. Estimating is a really useful skill. Sometimes we don't need to know exactly the amount. We just need to know about what will it be. Here we have an example. Sarah, she's, she's, she's going to be taking a test, and uh, she wants to score 78% on her next test. She knows that the test will have 40 questions. So about how many will she need to get correct? She doesn't need to know exactly how many she needs to get correct. She could find that out. She could calculate exactly what 78% of 40 is. But I think just estimating will give her an idea in her mind about how well she needs to do on the test. So let's look at 78%. And if I want 78% of 40, I want to see if I can think of a compatible value that would work well with 40. And 78% is actually very close to 75%. And the reason that's good to know is because 75% is the same thing as 3 fourths. And I bet you could figure out what 3 fourths of 40 is. It would be 30. Questions? So she needs to get about 30 questions correct on this test. Now, if she gets exactly 30 of them correct, that's only 75%, and her goal was 78%. So she knows she needs something a little bit over 30. She needs a score of a little bit higher than 30. Now, if you aren't sure how to know that 3 fourths of 40 is 30, you can set up a proportion and just say 3 out of 4 equals what out of 40? And I'll call this unknown value x. And then uh, we've done problems like this before. 4 times 10 is 40. Those are compatible. So just take 3 times 10. And that's how we get 30 for our answer. So estimating using little benchmark values. So here are some benchmark fractions that we can use when estimating percents. You know, 100% is one whole. We talked about that yesterday. Hopefully you know 50% is one half. 25% um, is one fourth. 75% is three fourths. You definitely need to know all of these, okay? These here are also good to know, 10% and 1%. That's one tenth and one out of 100 in fractional forms. Those are extremely useful to know. You also definitely need to know these two right here, 33 and a third percent, 66 and two thirds percent. Those are both kind of crazy looking percents with those mixed numbers there, but those are actually one third and two thirds in fractional form. So those are very, very common, very important for you to memorize. These other ones, the 20 percents, um, actually all of the 10 percents, you know, you have 20, 30, 40. Uh, we already did 50 over here, but 60, 70, 80, 90%. Um, these are all very good to know. Let's see if I can move this without actually writing on it. And we have one-fifth, two-fifths, three-fifths, four-fifths. That's your 20, 40, 60, and 80%. If you get to 100%, you're up to five-fifths or one whole. Now, for the 30, 70, and 90%, there you're looking at three-tenths, seven-tenths, and nine-tenths. If you don't memorize these, that's probably okay, um, but they are very nice to know. These probably would be good to know, okay? The 20, 40, 60, and 80%, one-fifth, two-fifths, three-fifths, and four-fifths. But the ones that I have in the boxes here are really critical. In fact, 10% and 1% are pretty important. I'm going to put the, a box around them also, too. So if you can memorize all of these that are in the boxes, these fractional equivalents for these different percents, Oh my goodness, that's going to help you a lot when you're estimating. You'll be able to refer back to this in the video. If you remember that if you go to about the three minute mark in the video, you're going to see all of these percents. We're about four and a half minutes in now, so you could see it there too if you want to go back to the video and find it quickly. All right, so let's look here at an example. This graph shows the eye colors among 500 students at a school. About how many students have brown? eyes and about how many have blue eyes okay so brown eyes is shown in in the um well it's, i i'm colorblind so i don't even know what color this is brown and then we have blue over here and they made them both blue isn't that nice 
Okay. I think the brown is this one here. And I think the blue is this one over here on this eye color um, circle graph. Um, so anyway, according to the graph, yeah, 46% of the students have brown eyes. So this 46% does represent brown eyes. Estimate 46% of 500. Well, you know, 46% is pretty close to half, isn't it? It's really close to 50%. So I, I'm really trying to find about what half or 50% of 500 is. Can you find half of 500? Is that something you can do mentally? Well, if you can cut 500 in half, it'd be about 250. Okay, so about how many students have brown eyes? About 250 students. Now, it wasn't 50%, it was 46%, so it'll be a little under this. It'll be a little less than 250 students, but we're just estimating. Now, if we want to estimate the number of students who have blue eyes, 23% is close to 25 percent and remember our benchmark fraction for this one would be one fourth so we want one fourth of 500. now if you want one fourth of something you can cut it in half twice half of 500 we knew from here was 250. half of 250 is 125. so we have 125 students approximately who have blue eyes. Now, if that's not something you can easily do mentally, by the way, anytime you're dividing by four, like to find one fourth of something, to divide by four, just cut it in half and then cut it in half again. Just like if you were dividing a pizza into four slices, you would cut it in half and then you would cut it in half again and you get your four slices, right? Same thing with numbers. You could cut it in half and then cut it in half again. Half of 500 is 250. Half of 250 is 125. So there are around 125 students who have blue eyes. I'm just estimating. All right, here's another example. Summer jobs. 53% of 94 students surveyed plan to get a summer job. Okay. So if I want to find 53% of 94, 53% um, is very close to 50% or one half. But then we get to 94 and we need to ask ourselves, do we want to round that to 90? Or should we just go with 100 because it's really nice and easy to work with 100? Both are good. Technically, 94 is closer to 90 than it is to 100. But I think using 100 would be very reasonable when estimating our percent. Okay. So anyway, over here, we'd have 50% or half of 90. Can you divide 90 by 2 mentally? It'd be 45, right? So 45 uh, students plan to get summer jobs, approximately. Not exactly, approximately. 45 students plan to get summer jobs. Now, if we had rounded 94 to 100, so we'd find 50% of 100 or 1 half of 100. Well, 100 divided by 2 would be around 50 students, right? Who plan to get summer jobs. Now, we got different answers each way, didn't we? But they're both reasonably close. Around 45 to 50 students plan to get jobs during the summer. Again, we're just using 50%, uh, which is close to 53%, and which we know the benchmark fraction there would be one half. And you either find a half of 90 if you feel like you can do that, or if you think it's easier, find half of 100, and your estimate will be very reasonable. All right, so let's do some estimating. 42% of 40. If you look back at about the four-minute mark and look at your different benchmark fractions, this is close to 40%. And 40% as a fraction is two-fifths. Okay, so I really want two-fifths of 40. Is that something you could figure out mentally? Well, you could write a proportion. Two out of five would equal what out of 40? I'll put an X there for the unknown value. These are compatible, you see. 5 times 8 is 40. 
So we could take 2 times 8, which equals 16. So it's approximately 16. By the way, when you're doing an estimate, you could write the word about here, or you could use a squiggly equal sign. Sometimes people use that squiggly equal sign, meaning it's about 16. That's a nice way that you can show an estimate as well. Now this next one, 34% of 60, this right here is really, really close to one third. Remember, one third is 33 and a third percent. See how close that is to 34 percent? So I'm, I'm going to estimate by finding one third of 60. And you might be thinking, ooh, this one's actually pretty easy then. What's one third of 60? Can you divide 60 by 3? That's how you find one third of something. It's 20. About 20. So I'm going to put that squiggly equal sign again. Do you need to use the squiggly equal sign? No. But it's kind of fun. Hey, 9% of 50. 9% is very close to 10% of 50. Remember, 10% is the same thing as 1 tenth of 50. And if you want 10% or 1 tenth of something, just divide by 10. Move the decimal point left one space. And you get 5. About 5. There's my squiggly equal sign. It's approximately equal to 5. Isn't that easy? If you um, can memorize some of those benchmark fractions, which you need to do. How about 21% of 120? Let's estimate this one. Seems to me this is really close to 20% of 120. Okay. Now, you could actually find 10% of 120. which is 12, right? If you want 10% of something, divide by 10 or move one space, the decimal point, one space left. If 10% is 12, what would 20% be? Oh, that's kind of a cool trick, huh? Just double it, multiply by two. So take 12 times two, it's 24, isn't it? So 24 would be a nice estimate there. Or if you know 20%, has uh, the same value as one-fifth. That would be the benchmark fraction. One out of five would equal what out of 120? Well, this one's a little bit trickier. I think doing it this way, this is why I was showing you this little trick here. I think doing it this way when working with multiples of 10% is an easy way to do it. But five does go into 120 if you multiply by 24, okay? So then when you take one times 24, you get 24 here out of 120 or 24. 64 percent of 45. Hey, this is another one where, you know, this is close to two-thirds. How do I know that? Because 66 and two-thirds percent is close to 64 percent. And that's one you definitely need to memorize. It, it, it's benchmark fractional value is it's around two thirds. So I want to find two thirds of 45. Is it easy to split 45 into three parts? Can you divide 45 by three? Wouldn't that give you 15? One third of 45 is 15. So two thirds of 45 would be 30. So 30 would be a good estimate here. It's about 30. My squiggly equal sign got pretty messy there. And if you want 4% of 80, this is close. You know, you, you could just say, well, isn't that close to 5%? It's a little bit under 5% of 80. I did put a little a couple asterisks here because this is kind of a tricky one. Remember this trick I used over here? What's 10% of 80? It's 8, right? You just move the decimal point, left one space. So 5%, how would I find that? Hopefully you're a step ahead of me here and you're realizing, oh, I could just cut that in half. I could divide by 2. And 8 divided by 2 is 4. So 5% of 80 is 4. So 4% 4 of 80 would be just a little under 4. Pretty close to 4. Okay, so that's it for today's lesson. I will see you tomorrow.